This will be a mildly theoretical video on the existence of Gaussian processes. Now you might be saying, what do you mean the existence of Gaussian processes? You just gave us two examples of Gaussian processes. So we know that Gaussian processes exist and you would be right, that's true. But what the theorem on the existence of Gaussian processes says is not that there exists some Gaussian process, but that you can choose these finite dimensional distributions at will and the res there, there will be a Gaussian process with those finite dimensional distributions. So we're going to state that result and fortunately it takes a very simple form for Gaussian processes as opposed to random processes in general. And here's the theorem. It uses some nice results by Kolmogorov. So for any set S, this is looking similar to the definition, for any mean function, I'll write it as mu from S to R, and any, any covariance function, covariance function k from s cross s to r there exists there exists a Gaussian process z t on s such that the expected value of z t equals mu of t and the covariance of z s z t equals k s t and this is for any s and t in s. And now I haven't defined what a covariance function is but we will do that shortly. I'm going to give you a few examples uh, first of, of more interesting Gaussian processes before we get to the rigorous definition of a covariance function. But it's actually it's a very simple thing. I could just just say it right now. It's just you know for, for any finite set of points that that this function that gives you a positive semi-definite matrix, a symmetric positive semi-definite matrix. In other words, that, that this gives you a covariance matrix. But we'll get into that in more detail and, and we'll see some nice properties of covariance matrices. So what is, what is this theorem saying? What is, uh, you know, why, why is this a nice thing to have? Well, the beautiful thing about this is that it lets us construct Gaussian processes with prescribed mean and covariance. So we can just choose some mean function, you know, pick your mean function, whatever you want, pick your covariance function, you know, you can prescribe the, the pairwise covariances, and then you get a Gaussian process on S with those mean and covariance. So this is a very, uh, actually a very, very nice fact and when I say construct, I mean, mathematically speaking, you can, can, you can construct it. I mean, of course, you, you can never actually physically, you know, computationally, because, you know, like if it's, if S is R, like for this, this example, you know, you're always going to be dealing with only a finite set of values in S whenever you're doing something in, in practical, in, in practice. So really, maybe I should say that this is not actually relevant for practical applications. I mean, because like I was just saying, in any practical application, you're always looking at only finitely many points of S. And so you're always in this situation, you're always in the trivial situation where you just have some multivariate Gaussian on finitely many, you know, with the, it's indexed by finitely many things. So it's just a, a, a multivariate Gaussian. So in practice, you're always in the trivial case, which is sort of a, an interesting thing. And so in fact, this, this more general statement, the fact that there exists these, these more general things, is really only, only really uh, important for theory. It's only really important for when you're trying to prove things about these, these more general objects. 
Okay, so that's just a very brief uh, description and statement of the theorem on the existence of Gaussian processes. And we will use this in the next couple videos to write down some covariance uh, some covariance functions and then we can just we can just generate a bunch of Gaussian processes and and we'll see what we get so that's gonna be that's gonna be fun oh and one so one more thing I maybe I should mention here is that it's enough to specify the pairwise covariances because then for any finite number of indices t1 through tn here by specifying the pairwise covariances, we have specified the covariance matrix, and we have also, of course, specified the means by the mean function. And that the mean and covariance matrix defines a multivariate Gaussian distribution on those points. So it's enough to just, just define the, these pairwise. We don't have to define the distribution on every finite subset. That's, that's actually a special property of Gaussian processes as opposed to random processes in general. Okay, so that's existence of Gaussian processes.